Okay. This poem is called Coda. Oh, come to rest, Majun traveler. Majun is a confection of uh, hashish and uh, and what? Honey. Honey. honey yeah, nuts. honey and and nuts, and nuts right? <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, come to rest, Majun traveler. I am the last storyteller who chose death beyond slavery, granting amnesty to guerrilla wars of hills of riff of all lost tribes to all desert chiefs away in exile. Tents on Eastern islands, black Hodita in silver ankle, musk Hodita, all senses of the night sea. Blue Hodita, your touch, electric darkness, lost beyond reason in an Arab bazaar. The egg is hatching as the legend said it would. Poison apothecary serpent, poison angel's light. The Majun traveler bends his way from Karma Street to the Milky Way. <laughs> of course, I've styled myself as the Majun traveler for many years now, but I didn't have any today. Morning meditation. We all know, we know all the answers and still we struggle with our mortal longings. Ram Narayan and Rumi, and once again, Raphael gives me the dawn. I couldn't find my book. I lost my hat, but my key is still in my pocket. So what? Without losing anything, what could I hope to find? I found my beard in the mirror. I found the sunlight in the corner. And now that water drips on the page. Eureka, I find myself in the bathtub, which is just where I want to be, thirsty for a drink of water, longing for the sea. Oh, see, I mean, I, somehow this other poem, I looked in front to see what was there, but there's no paper sticking out there. Those are two good poems. So I'm going to read them. Well, I know everything in the book is good. Yeah. For Jack Smith, you know, the great Jack Smith. Does everybody here know who Jack Smith was? Yes. Yeah. OK. If, is there anyone who didn't? All right. Well, Jack Smith was uh, the, uh, the greatest uh, other uh, uh, artist that I knew of my generation. And uh, he was especially known for his photography and for his filmmaking. Filmmaking, he made the film Flaming Creatures, but also he wrote poems and other things. So I wrote this uh, on November 14th, it says 1932, September 18th, 1989. Oh, I guess that's his birth date, and then uh, November 14th, and 32, and September 18th, and 1989. He's on the wall? Yeah. Well, incredible. I can't even turn my neck. Anyway, I got a picture of him right in front of me with a uh, giant, with, does it have a fly in his? Uh, yeah, same picture. That's a really great coincidence. Huh? Synchronicity. Yeah. Love at your feet, Medini's tea lock of musk anoints your third eye. For every lesion visible on the outside, there are 30 more inside, the male nurse told us. You found a discarded penguin in the garbage can on the way to Rome. You became the bird gasping on the polluted strand, flying free at last, a Garuda on the Bardo wing. Now the lobster is behind you, like an evolutionary memory. No more extra cerebral nostalgia as you enter spirit dreams beyond Aladdin's lamp and Sinbad's dream. Here, yeah, I want to emphasize it's here, mm -hmm. like not here, but not listen to, but here, Angus, right here. Where are you, Angus? Okay. Here, Angus, where am I? Beating on the cembalum, pasty Arnold scrubbing the deck. What flaking plaster, moldy reality you left embellished by your gorgeous sensibility, your hatred of landlords, your crown of thorns. You shoplifted my heart when I wasn't looking. 
fertilize us all with male fire while feigning travesties on tottering stepladders of kingly aspiration. May the herds yet come, white-eyed and bereft of hate. May the herds of cattle rebel in the victory from the hammer and the pick. May you and all the rest of us come to claim our rightful legacy to a future without thorns. That's what I was thinking in those days. It's a, that was a, written a while ago. I don't know if I have a date on it. Or, well, I didn't believe it. Did. OK, morning meditation. Did I read that already? Huh? I don't know. I went backwards, sir. Well, OK, it's a poem called Elegy. It was written in Paris for Brian Geisen when I first met him in 1961. I realized after he died that I had written his elegy the day that I met him. That's the kind of magician Brian Geisen was. You have left. We lived on the edge of the sea's awareness, denizens of the ocean of air. You are no shape, no other. You are the clarity of death above the staleness of towns, above the pinnacles isolated as men crowd doorways, you ride the mystery of shape changing. And this maybe is the grain, the chances and the colors, where even the blue patch fades like things of all weathers. But can such sorrowful holes shelter a grandeur? Our existence with no human consolation is in a dwelling undecided, space of mute furnishings, no standing beauty, singing between the winding years of shame and reverence. Time is in boxes and drawers, while nothing, riding on a dial, calibrated with speed and silence and perfection, instantly rearranges itself, undisguised between sunlight and mountain flurries. Okay, here's one called Secret Milk. Did, am I am I reading these again, or am I, I'm crazy, I guess? All right. As the ice sublimates and is lost, all that is left is the dirt. Ronald Greeley. It is a glorious summer day in New York. For a brief moment, I depart the cool world of air conditioning for a natural walk, brisk and full of encounters like the angelic Jamaican nurse who taught me how to shoot insulin. Now I can stick a silent needle into the flesh of my thigh and become one with my father in his underwear. Who is that drunken misfit who grunts at me sitting permanently on the sidewalk in front of the supermarket on 107th Street? I sit in a sugar-free salon eating chickpeas with Milan Kundera, Gaston Bachelard, Heinrich Bull, and Roberto Gonzalez Echeverria. They find New York charming beyond their expectations. I explain it's all an illusion that everyone is dead or a commodity. We are trying to demagnetize the population, spray the celebrity cockroaches in their breeding gowns, grounds, create a sanctuary for chimpanzees before the memory of village women is completely destroyed. In a silver bubble over the red vastness of the Sahara Desert, someone is trying to establish a friendlier relationship with our planet. Even in Mongolia, hunting with eagles has become a tourist attraction. We are all cultural relics trying to free ourselves from melancholy. Like the squid, we expel our ink and grow in the black night nourished by solitude. Snow composed of water is black despite our eyes, Anaxagoras. Don't drink barium today, my sweet. Let the tumors rest. Something is eating away at the surface of Jupiter's most distant moon. In my heart, an ocean of salty water. Cavedo in New York, the skeleton keys. Am I reading these poems again or something? Huh? No, not yet. Okay, I thought I started this already. 
Cavedo in New York, the skeleton key. You wander over the old neighborhoods and hardly notice the last bread shop. You are thinking about Borges and another imaginary palace reappears as you turn out of the jewelry shop into the dusk of another New York day. In the doorway waits the ghost of Charlie Parker and down West Broadway hangs a neon moon which is perhaps a projection of your own mind. Now you try to remember where you are, a moving light through a visible elevator shaft. Obliterated by the last syllable, you fail to find the key to the door. Yeah. Well, each one of these poems is a special poem. I wrote them, the ones I'm reading now, quite a long time ago, but they still seem very now. Can writing bring it back? The Xerox place creates amnesia. For the third time in the last two months, I've left my bag somewhere. Now waiting until the Xerox place across the street opens on this Sunday morning to see if it is there like the last time. Another weird exhausting night with Gerard here as he was before when I luckily recovered it. My notebook with the Kenneth Anger sequence from Texas the recent meditation at La Casita, a particularly good piece on Purgatorio. Purgatorio is locked up at night, as Beatrice and Ramesses agree that Calvin Klein will never cut it, that paradise can only be temporary, that mythologies of the heart is meat, not lingerie. But this piece I read through Gerard's answering machine, and he copied it onto another tape, which makes it retrievable even if the bag is not. Poetry may be next to prophecy, but also I know that life is next to death, that sanity lives next door to insanity. Timothy calls to find out whether I have gotten to the Xerox store, but it doesn't open till 10. He tells me of Hemingway's suitcase of manuscripts left by his wife at the train station, about a lost signac between two cardboards, about Karen's notebook, left on a train in Europe, the pink pages of his novel at the garbage dump near a train station in Spain, some of which he recovered and saw published in Signal by Brett Romer. Gerard found a camera bag he left behind at Veselka's, and K.J. Clark threw out an expensive camera Gerard had hidden in an otherwise empty garbage bag. Jane Bowles left manuscripts in taxi cabs, and T. Lawrence rewrote seven pillars of wisdom after losing the complete manuscript. And Anthony Artaud, did he go mad after losing his magical cane? What falls to my lot falls to me. What falls to your lot falls to thee. On a rickshaw in Calcutta, Klaus argued about the few rupees and left behind a bag with $25,000 in cash. None of us will get out alive, and yet, back still in the hole, oh, Buck, still in the hole, has lost more than I will ever have. The miracle, see, who, who laughed? Someone who knew Buck? Oh, no. <laughs> the miracle is in what one still has, or in what one has given away. Radio waves bouncing around in the void, the recycled thought in Akasha, the dust of an unborn star twinkling, twinkling feebly in the future. My father dreamed of losing something in the subway as he was dying. And God, did he ever dream he could lose a galaxy? Could a universe be misplaced, forgotten while standing in line at the post office? It's five to 10 and I have to go. And I, I was halfway up Purgatorio when it happened, industriously hanging on the ledge of sloth, and a man goes by in a wheelchair with no legs. So it wasn't there, and nobody knows anything, and I'm a laughing stock, and I can't go anywhere without risking my life or what's left of it. And I have no rightful place, and what do I expect? That the shoemaker's elves are going to arrive at the door of my life and rescue me, protect me, or my word, my very heartbeat, save it for future generations. 
Amazing to imagine the significance of Lascaux, or a single sigh petrified as a wrinkle in time, and another egg opens and another thing crawls out, finely tuned and programmed for death, which is life, or could one reverse it all and sleep at last in the yoke of peace? Kenneth Anger, taking Jack Smith to the, all the second-hand shops in San Francisco looking for a morning glory phonograph and settling for a plastic space gun, which he paid $1.50 for when Jack asked the storekeeper if he would take 25 cents. Samson is dead and Ginger Rogers too. It is hailing in Dallas and I am reading my poems under a tent. It is as if the very drummers of heaven are accompanying my songs, and still I am standing in the ashes of my ardor, unable to withstand the silence. What will I use for a shoulder bag? You think it's funny. Maybe you're right. Take care of my kids and fuck my wife. I may not be gone, but it sure feels like I'm on my way as Gerard speaks of buying a vacuum cleaner, and I hold on to the only handle I know, but the bag has vanished into thin air. Is it only the presence of a common enemy that makes us unite? How about the uncommon aspiration, the desire to climb over these walls to see what's out there? Only in that way can we discover what's in here, as if hidden, so hard it is to know, to blur the distinction between yours and mine a notion more sublime, another note in a bottle, an arrow fallen from the sky, reaching no one in particular, another do and die. Whatever truly dies stays dead forever, except the spirit live and redeem the spark. This I saw in the luminous glass. Take away all from me that I may stand tall as the flame which ignites the dark of the dark to come. Surrender me not to the formless and unusable worlds of the incomplete, but candle me in the hope of eternal return, as if in a magical tale of my own telling. It will be so. I was okay before when I was inching my way as a worm. Now I'll even buy a ticket if I have to. Straighten thy legs. Rise up, brother. It is I who call you to your better self. Thank you, thank you. What's, take me down? All right, okay, I'll read one more song. One more poem. No, okay. I didn't realize what I'm not realizing the time. Well, no, I'll read one more. Optical time delay, where you can't step into the same river once, baby. How fast can you download your free flight mirrors, fasten your seatbelt, and enter the world of darkness forever? Plasma solution can replace your blood on demand while you swim upstream to nowhere or sew your shadow back on like Peter Pan. You can cross any border without fear just by wearing a motion tracker bodysuit and a simulated face. Feverishly tweaking your imagination allows you to enjoy the restrictions of obsolete governments, cyber sex on demand. Don't be a crash test dummy or a Teflon widow. Stay a nomad and keep traveling with or without a surfboard. If a bookmark is a bullet, then God can surely be an imperfection. There is no simple causal chain. Living with flux is a permanent state. Stay on the threshold, get an impersonal computer, bathe in the shimmer of liminal possibilities. Decenter your vision and cross the border of human nature. Your mind is a diagram. Your heart can swivel in any direction. But if you can't shake your ass, you'll never make it to the other side, the last user.
is already with us. The playing field has shifted beyond your wildest dreams. There are no rules in a knife fight. You want me to stop? All right, I'm going to do a sentimental one now. If it's possible to be sentimental about a guy like Charles Henry Ford, who I knew very, very well. I mean, I guess he would be 100 now. For Charles Henry Ford, in the bright blue plastic ring, the Cretan blue is caught, a Minoan bauble cast up in the souvenir shops, Sifana Thika, above the harbor. The mystical, plastical, cerulean blue. Are your eyes still blue, Mr. Ford? Have you checked them out lately? A book should be made of your eyes. You want to call it multiple exposures. The blue in your mirror still answers your questions. An avalanche haunts our conversation, gives impetus to Aquarian projects, while you are reassured by the captive blue looking back at you through a curtain of the hermetic cerulean ultramarine blue. It is Azurian, Protean, ultra-Aquarian you, lapis lazulian, and still perpendicular, incredible, impossible, indelible you. Okay. I'm just going to read one poem from this book, just to show I have another book. I have about five of them, five of them here. I left have another five in the house. Okay, I'm going to start. I'm gonna, I just opened it. I'm choosing the one at random. You know, I mean, I didn't choose it because it's a good poem. It's just an accident. Whatever it is, maybe it's a terrible poem. No, it can't be. Morning train to Zurich. Did I read that already? Okay. Starting with the A's. When Akhmatova saw a polonaire there on the withered shore, she said, let those who died first go first. It is our Russian law. A polonaire refused, saying there is no first or last, only your indelible profile red etched on the moving past. When the mist rising as they kissed, then the mist rising as they kissed showed that they were no more. But you and I, dreaming of the sky, discover the keys on tomorrow's floor as the train goes by, as the train goes blackly by. Yeah, I know, I know you want me to stop. I'm taking your advice. I'm taking that. Huh? I know there's a lot of readers. I don't want to. I only want to stop five of them. <laughs> I'm going to read one more poem. All right, here's one with a, a nice title, Credo, which means I believe. Uh, I spent 40 years taking photographs, trying to find God's face. Today I left my camera at home. Thinking about you, I always knew it would be a dead end. Even a dog thinks it has a master. When I go through the streets denying everything, I am looking for you. It was only a game of hide and seek with no winners or losers, just a shot in the dark, a dream of clemency. Well, it's always fun, really. You never realize until you're doing it. What?